Um, so welcome to those watching on the recording. You're joining the Compassion for Now Mindful Approaches to Mental Health and Wellbeing webinar. Um, we're about to start with a landing meditation that's going to be guided by one of our speakers this evening. Um, usually um, we host these webinars from the Network of Wellbeing and I've done short mindfulness practices previously, but we've got a a few mindfulness teachers this evening we're really um, excited to have. So Paramabandhu Groves is going to guide just a short five minute practice to kind of help us land in this online space together and prepare us for an evening of uh, an hour and a half of uh, shared learning and connection together. So I will hand over to Paramabandhu to do that, lead that guiding practice um, now, if that's okay. Okay, thank you very much Flo and uh, very nice to be with you this evening. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, just lead us through a bit of mindfulness just to really help us arrive this evening. So um, let, let's just start by, um, you can either leave your eyes open or if you want to, just closing your eyes or, or, or lowering, you know, lowering your, your vision. And just allowing a sense of your attention, your awareness to drop into your body. And in particular, just feeling the contact of the ground beneath your feet. So you can have a sense of the support of the ground beneath you. I'm just going to lead us a bit through the body. So just noticing the legs. You might feel contact with clothing. You might notice parts of your legs resting on something. Maybe there's a bit of tension. We often hold tension in the top of our legs. But just allowing whatever is there. And then just bring contact to whatever we're sitting on. So perhaps sitting on a chair, we can feel the contact with the chair. And the sense of allowing the chair to take our weight. And then bringing awareness to the back, my spine. And a sense of the body being upright, but without straining. And taking awareness to the head and the face. See if we can notice any sensations in the face, maybe around the eyes, the mouth.
And then bring the awareness to the shoulders. You might notice if there's any holding on in the shoulders. And if we discover there is, we could invite that to release, to let go. And then bringing awareness to the arms and the hands. Allowing the hands to be supported by our lap. So we can let go of the arms. And then bringing awareness to the belly and the chest. And just noticing that we're breathing. Feeling the movements of the breath. Entering, leaving the body. I'm just noticing how you're feeling right now. But just acknowledging whatever's there, whatever you're bringing with you this evening. Whether we feel happy or sad, bored, excited, or nothing in particular. And just whatever is there, just allowing that to be. Just opening your eyes when you're ready, and now I'll hand back to Flo. Thank you so much, uh, Parent Bandhu, for that lovely grounding practice. I certainly feel um, much more centred. Um, and actually, uh, as often happens, as your mind is racing and settling in a mindfulness practice, I thought, oh yeah, um, are we gonna, we plan to do a poll with you guys. <laughs> Um, to find out, because I know that people are joining with various experiences of mindfulness, um, you might be interested in mindful approaches to um, mental health, but, but not a practice mindfulness at all, that's totally fine. Um, and we just want to make this a really open uh, learning space for everyone this evening. Um, but I'm just going to share a poll with you guys now, just um, to kind of get a sense of your guys' experience with mindfulness previously. So you hopefully can see a poll on your screen saying, do you practice mindfulness? Um, and if you wouldn't mind just selecting an option of, yes, you have a regular practice. Um, yes, I try to practice when I have time. I have tried once or twice, or no, I have never practiced mindfulness. Um, if you can see, um, can everyone see the poll or no? Yeah, okay, great. Um, I'm not seeing people's responses coming in strangely, but let's just see. I'll give a few more seconds and then, um, and then let's see. Ah. <laughs> okay, slight poll malfunction there. Um, sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure what happened. Um, okay. I'm going to just relaunch it once more and just see if it's uh, working again. So if you don't mind filling in your answer again, and if it doesn't work, then we will just share with each other in different ways. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, strange. Okay. Did um, briefly on the screen the results flow? It did show. Yeah, it did briefly. It showed ah, my okay. Oh, brilliant. 
not regular practice. Thank you for um, for um, saying that, Baron Vandy, because for me it's just showing 0% for all of them, which hasn't happened before. So, um, moving swiftly on, <laughs> and now feel free to write in the chat um, in the chat box about your experience with mindfulness. And also, I saw a few people writing thank you for that practice that Baron Vandy guided. So, um, feel free to share any reflections. It's always nice to um, I find in practicing mindfulness to connect in a group and to share and um, kind of this process of inquiry and, and sharing your experiences. Um, so um, great, I see some of you guys saw the, um, the, the results. So thanks Sarah in Oxfordshire, 57% said yes. Wonderful, this is audience participation at its best. Um, thanks so much. So that's really interesting. So okay, just over half of people are practicing mindfulness. Um, actually 52% <laughs> well corrected Sarah um, very diligently um, so interesting about half of the audience have, has got a kind of mindfulness practice of some kind um, and maybe others have kind of dipped your toe in the water or maybe coming to this completely new or um, is completely welcome um, so I'm gonna in a moment hand over to the first of our speakers just to um, let you guys know that um, those that haven't joined us on these webinars before. Um, this is a webinar series run by the Network of Wellbeing to explore different aspects of how we can build wellbeing together. And we tend to look at three kind of key themes, one being mental health, personal wellbeing, which we'll really focus on this evening. Um, and also looking at kind of community connections um, and activities and um, also kind of new perspectives for how we can uh, build back better following um, the corona crisis and also the many challenges that we face in society today. Um, so that's just a little bit about the series. Um, just to say we will be discussing openly mental health issues tonight um, and we really hope that this all you know in our experience it's really supportive to kind of connect and learn together and that's supportive of general well-being but um, of course we encourage um, people to seek um, further support in relation to mental health issues as needed so I just wanted to make that really clear from the start but yeah generally we hope to be creating a warm welcoming uh, atmosphere to like learn and connect together and um, so without further ado I will hand over to our first speaker of the evening, who are, um, is Karen Atkinson. So Karen is um, a senior partner, co-founder um, of Mindfulness UK and the author of Compassionate Mindful Inquiry in Therapeutic Practice. She is also chair of the British Association of Mindfulness Based Approaches. Um, Karen and her team offer teacher training in mindfulness and compassion in the UK and worldwide, online and face-to-face, -face, as well as e-learning and in-person. So we'll send um, detailed uh, links about all the speakers in follow-up um, to this webinar, but uh, with that, I, I look forward to hearing what Karen has to share with us this evening. So Karen, I'll hand over to you. Lovely. Thank you so much, Flo, and uh, thank you for having me here. And it's so nice to see a lot of faces. <laughs> I think I really see a lot of people I know, which is wonderful. So yes, I've been invited to talk about the relationship between mindfulness and compassion. Uh, for me, when I found uh, what that relationship was, it really changed my life, and I wanted to share it show to show you. Um, I wanted to set out uh, mindfulness, but knowing that 52% of you are practicing mindfulness, you know, it's really wonderful to know that you, you're, you've got a regular practice. Uh, but mindfulness can be so supportive for us in our lives. It really helps us to see the reality of the situation, uh, be very present. Uh, stops our ruminations and our catastrophizing and uh, really helps us to enrich our lives by dropping into the present moment. But for me, um, I practiced mindfulness for oh, about 15 years, something like that, on a very regular basis. And it was when I came uh, back to the uh, Sarah, uh, so sorry it, to interrupt you. It's yeah. just that your um, connection is is breaking up a little bit, and I think a few people are finding it difficult to hear you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there's a way that you could just sit a little bit closer to your Wi-Fi, or maybe just speaking even a little bit slower will help. Just in terms of okay. you're just dropping in and out. 
or okay. check your microphone indeed i um, will i'll put another mic in um just to see if that helps thank you sorry to interrupt it's absolutely fine just want to make sure that everyone can hear okay yeah of course is that any better is that it initially seems to be better yeah um okay. and maybe just um yeah like i say sometimes when you speak a, a bit slower than then um oh, the, the, okay. um thanks so much Sarah. <laughs> yeah. all right so yes i was just saying how mindfulness uh, really supported me in my life until I had a um, life-threatening disease of cancer. And it was then that I discovered the power of compassion. And the reason that I turned to compassion practices was because um, mindfulness was helping me to really stay steady and present and develop that sense of equanimity uh, during the process of the diagnosis and um, the treatment and so on. But it didn't give me really everything I felt I needed. Um, it really kept me a bit stuck in that place. And so I started looking around and really building my compassion practices uh, through reading and turning to people that I know who practice compassion in a very deep way. So I just want to share with you my screen. To show this beautiful image um, of the of the bird, let me just that's it. So uh, I'm sure this is a very familiar image to some of you, where the the bird has two wings, one of the wings being mindfulness and the other compassion, and the. Uh, in the context of if you just do your mindfulness practice then the bird isn't going to be able to fly and soar high and flourish and equally if you just do compassion practices and don't hold those compassion practices with a mindful attention uh, that sense of equanimity then the bird won't fly either so um, having a balance of both is so so important so this is what we do within our practice is, uh, I think it's helpful to start with a mind, the mindful awareness coming out of autopilot and becoming aware of what's going on for us in the present moment. Watching what's present in the body, heart and mind and the external environment. And then whatever is there, we bring kindness to that. So it, it might be difficulty, it might be pain or suffering or, um, critical voices or judgment. And we're not trying to push those away. We're just be bringing some sense of kindness, self-care, self-compassion to our experiences. And that's where our choices arise around how best to move forward in our lives from this present moment with awareness and a compassionate attitude. So that's a compassionate attitude to ourselves and to other people. And a question I ask myself so regularly during the day is, what can I do for myself that will really help to support me more? How can I bring more kindness into this particular situation? So it, it's a really useful phrase to start to use and it feels quite um, unusual to begin with. It can make you squirm a bit, but over time, the more we say it, the more familiar it becomes. Just gently, uh, asking how kindness can support us uh, even more deeply further in the choices that we make. So we know that pain and suffering stimulates our fight and flight and freeze response and uh, uh, the adrenaline and cortisol levels in our uh, body and our systems rise as a result of the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. And what self-soothing and self-compassion practices do is they increase our oxytocin and in turn that reduces our adrenaline and our cortisol. So oxytocin is around, it's the bonding hormone and it helps us to feel really connected, much less separate, uh, cared for um, and yeah, really uh, helps us to look after ourselves and others. So doing self-soothing, self-compassion practices can be so supportive for us. Uh, and it's not that we're turning away from our suffering, it's how can we uh, really support ourselves with our difficulties. 
And these practices really help with that. So in my book that um, Flo has just kindly mentioned, I um, wrote the book to help people who are interested in self-reflection and also who are mindfulness teachers. And I wanted to look at the core stages of practice and um, the sequence that we go through during our practice of paying attention, noticing what happens when we pay attention, and then linking what we've learnt within our practice into our everyday life. So this is the model that I developed to explain it. Um, it's, it, uh, it shows that mindfulness is on the right hand side and that's where we start in being mode. So as you can see, by paying attention, we become aware by coming out of autopilot and tuning into what's happening in the body, heart and mind. And then we can start to um, notice what happens by exploring beneath the superficial experiences seeing our patterns of thought, so our critical mind, our, our behaviours, our judgement, and those ruminations and so on. And we, building those resources through these practices and awareness can really help us to become much more resilient. And then we move into linking where we can integrate um, what we've learned through our practice, through our inquiry, into our everyday life. But sometimes what happens, and I really experienced this so profoundly when I was ill, was that uh, sitting there with our difficulty, it's really wonderful to be accepting, but it also can help um, um, engender that sense of vulnerability and feel really raw and exposing. And that's where self-compassion, moving over to the other side, bringing in self-compassion and self-soothing really helped me to deal with those difficulties to, to um, soothe myself as I was going through the, these very difficult times. And I started to change my habits and my behavior and my thinking by noticing what was happening to me when I did bring in self-compassion and self-soothing. And over time, that led to really sustainable change. So I, I live my life in a very different way. I have um, different internal conversations with myself and I make much better, um, more supportive choices. Sorry, that was just your one minute. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. And so uh, the joy of this, when I was talking to a neuroscientist friend of mine, was that all of these different processes can be explained neurologically. And there is a chapter in my book that looks at these in more detail. So if you're interested in the neuroscience, then um, it's a good place to go to to get that information. And I just wanted to share here with you um, a picture of us on retreat in Sharpham House, um, a wonderful venue just up the road from Flo <laughs> um, near Totnes. So yeah, it's an absolutely wonderful place to go. We lead and guide a lot of retreats there. So the mindfulness and compassion, compassion self-compassion and compassion for others um, are the two wings of the bird and they help us to absolutely soar in our lives, flying high and flourishing. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, one thing that we miss from a, uh, on an online event is really being able to show our warm appreciation but we do have a reactions button where we can give you a bit of a um which is at the bottom of zoom if people want to give a little round of applause or a thumbs up for uh, karen's beautiful presentation i love that image of the uh two wings of the bird it's really really yeah stunning and um really resonated with a lot of people i could see in the chat box um, just to remind people um, that you're welcome to ask questions on what Karen has shared but, and, and our, my colleague Roger will be keeping an eye on the chat box for questions and then we'll be coming to, to those towards the end of our um, discussion but they will be picked up by Roger so feel free to um, share questions if you have them as we go along. Um, but for now I'm going to hand over to or introduce our next um, speaker for this evening who's already um, given us a lovely grounding meditation at the start, uh, Dr. Paramavandu Groves, who's a former consultant psychiatrist in the NHS and founding director of Breathing Space, the health and wellbeing wing of the London Buddhist Centre. Um, he's the author, he is the author with Dr. Jed Shamel of Mindful Emotion, a short course in kindness. And again, really looking forward to hearing uh, what Paramavandu has to share this evening. So I'll hand over to you.
Great, thank you very much indeed Flo. Um, so yeah, I was, um, a little while ago, I was uh, giving a talk on uh, kindness actually, and I was doing a PowerPoint presentation. So I was looking for some images and I, I Googled uh, kindness. And the sort of thing that appeared was like um, a fluffy chick with a kitten. Now, I don't know what your response is that, but I'm afraid for me that was not kindness. Um, uh, you know, very sweet that it kind of is, but that was not kindness. So I wanted to just really say a few words about what kindness and compassion are not, because I think it's, it's really helpful to be clear about what it is we're talking about. Um, because if we've got a wrong idea about what it is, then we'll think, well, why would I want to do that? So um, some of the things about um, what kindness um, is not, um, is it's not weak, it's not stupid and it's not manipulative. So uh, first of all, it's not weak. So what I mean by that is sometimes we can think of um, kindness as being, uh, as being like a doormat. You just go along with whatever anybody you know, wants you to do. So absolutely not. Kindness sometimes requires a lot of courage and a need to, be, you know, to stand up, including standing up for, for oneself or for indeed other people. Secondly, um, real kindness or real compassion is not stupid. It's got an element of wisdom um, about it, of seeing um, what is needed. So, you know, the, the, the sort of the joke version of, um, of, of stupid kindness is the, the Boy Scout who um, is very proud because he's done his good deed for the day and says it was really hard, this, this good deed. And you ask him what he did and he said, oh, I, I helped an old lady across the road and you go, but you know, why was that hard? And it said, well, she didn't want to cross the road. Um, so it, it's that sort of thing of where we, um, uh, we don't really see the big picture of what, what is actually helpful in the situation. We've got an idea of what kindness is, but that, that's not it. And then manipulative. So, Sometimes we fear that um, kindness is, is um, just, or compassion is, is just being manipulative. And certainly sometimes one can feel on the receiving end of that where you feel, oh, it's a bit, feels a bit unclean or there's something in it for, um, there's something that's wanted from me. Um, and, you know, whilst it's very easy to have mixed motives, and I think we can't help that to some extent. Again, it's something we can, you know, that's definitely not what we're talking about. Um, it's not about getting something back uh, when we're acting with kindness or compassion. And then a bit like in my slide, um, kindness is, a real kindness is not um, sentimental. Um, sentimentality is, is where there's like lots of emotion, um, but no real action. It's a bit like where, again, if you're on the receiving end of it, it can feel like it's suddenly all about the other person, whereas you're the one who's suffering, but it, it seems to be suddenly all about them. There's lots of, um, yeah, lots of feelings. Um, one could say slacktivism is an example of uh, a, a potential sentimentality. So real kindness, real compassion, um, I think, it, first of all, as Karen said, it includes both self and other. So it's very easy for us often to miss ourselves out of the equation. Or well, then we go the other way and we, we, we get really into the self, but we forget about other people. So it includes both self and other people. And it includes all of us. So it includes our, our thoughts, our feelings, and it includes our volition, our, our, our actions. And I think importantly, um, we need to think of compassion and kindness as um, a, a, a direction rather than a destination. It's not like we ever get to a point of being perfectly kind or perfectly compassionate. Um, it's more like we can always be a bit kind or a bit more compassionate. We can always, you know, we'll, we make mistakes in doing it and we can learn from that and we can, um, you know, next time we can, we can do, a bit, do a bit more, go a bit further. So it's always a direction that's available for us. And I think of it as kindness and compassion as being like belonging to a whole family of skillful or helpful um, emotions. Um, 
you know, that includes friendliness, appreciation, joy, gratitude, equanimity, a bit like um, light going through a prism that refracts into a, a, a rainbow colors. They're all these sort of colors. And um, I just saw there was a chat thing about kindness being a practice, and that's absolutely the case. Kindness is definitely a practice. So we can practice it through uh, meditation. There are meditation practices for kindness and compassion, but we can also practice it by putting it into um, practice in our lives, by trying to act with kindness and compassion. And I'm just going to finish with um, just one example of that, which is called the um, uh, five finger gratitude exercise. So gratitude is a really lovely um, aspect of um, kindness and compassion, which is a sense of appreciation for our lives. And it's a really good thing to do, actually, ideally every day, but just to, you know, think quickly, and you might want to do it right now, just think of simple things that you've, you know, maybe appreciated from today on the last few days. So, I'm, I mean, um, you know, the sort of things that come to my mind is, um, you know, I went to buy a flat white and the person who was really friendly, who was um, serving me the coffee. And um, I really enjoyed the fragrance of a sweet pea on my balcony. That was a, a really nice little uh, moment. I had a bike ride today and it's just great. Just a sense of being alive and being on my bike. It was re really, really fun. And then we had a fire alarm today. And that was a bit of a downer, but actually I really appreciated the, the camaraderie of, of the friends who I live with and when we all sort of trooped out um, of, 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 of um, the building. So, yeah, we can just, you know, bring things to mind. Um, and the studies have shown that actually the more we practice that, it can have a really positive, and I've known that from people's lives, it can have a really transforming effect because so often we have a, a negative bias. We sort of notice the bad things. It's like if you go shopping and, um, you know, nine of the customers were really good. I mean, nine of the people serving you were really helpful. One wasn't. Which one do you go and talk about when you get home? Um, so we've easily got that negative bias and it can really turn it around by practicing gratitude. Okay, so I'll hand back to Flo again. Thank you so much, Paramabandi. Um, and again, inviting everyone to, um, if you don't mind, give a round of applause <laughs> um, to Paramabandi for his talk. Um, that was really helpful. And I, I really resonate with this idea of, of compassion and kindness being a direction rather than a destination. And as Angela added, a, a practice as well. So something like you reflect that you can put into practice in different ways in your in your day to day life. It's really powerful, actually, that <clears throat> and humbling to see it in that way, because then as as it being a destination, it's that not something you're ever fully arrived at. It's something you're ongoing, um, ongoingly bringing more and more into your life. Um, so thanks so much. So that brings us on to um, our final speaker for this evening. And thank you all for um, the questions and the comments that you're sharing in the chat box. Again, I know that my colleague Roger is looking out for the specific questions. What can help him um, um, pick out the questions um, is putting a cue at the start that I see Angela has helpfully done for her question. But if you've forgotten to do that, no worries. But if you remember to put a capital Q at the start of your question, then Roger can easily pick them out um, when we come to the Q&A section later. Um, and as you have been doing, feel free to share general kind of comments and reflections on what the speakers are sharing. That's really welcome. Um, so I'm going to move on to introducing our final speaker for this evening, which is Chukameka Max well, or Tukes for sure. Um, so Tukes has had a really eclectic working life. Um, he studied esoteric philosophy and was a volunteer probationary Christian Buddhist monk. Um, and he also worked as a, an assistant paramedic and a Quaker prison chaplain. So a real rich range of experiences. Um, he now works at a variety of wellbeing related projects, including Action to to prevent suicide, CIC. So really looking forward to hearing um, what Jukes has to share this evening. I'll hand over to you, Jukes. I just invite you to unmute yourself. There you go. Can you all hear me? Yeah. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for those two uh, talks before me. So I'm going to just try and think about it on a, on a sort of practical level, because what I've found through COVID, I had an opportunity to press pause, which was really quite intense, actually. It was quite intense to realise that as much as I thought I was practising compassion and mindfulness and everything else, I was still rushing around in the monkey cage or on the hamster wheel. So it really, really helped me to sort of really, really, really look at what it meant to do compassion for the now. And, um, and that is the whole thing to try and be so present. And so what I'm going to be talking about is how, how hard it is sometimes to practice that in the West. I was very privileged a few years back to go to Bhutan and Sikkim in Northern India. And when I went to Bhutan, I felt like I just wanted to die and stay there forever. Partly because in that country, both the prime minister, the king, everyone practices Buddhism, compassion, and it's part of the whole system. So it wasn't a situation of when we were in a secular system or trying to convince someone how good mindfulness and compassion are. So one of the things that about the whole of this is where mindfulness and everything, one of the great Buddhist, um, Buddhist masters is called Guru Padmasambhava, who spent a lot of time in, in Bhutan. And he said, although hundreds of thousands of explanations are given, there's only one true thing to understand. No one thing that liberates everything, and that's awareness of your true nature. So that is the practice, which is so hard, I find, to do. But lockdown has enabled me to take much, much more notice of things around me in a way that I've never really done in this lifetime at all. So one of the things that we've been utilizing in mental health and health in general are the five ways to well-being. And again, lovely lotus, one level. And this is such a simple practice as well as it's a bit akin to the five fingers of gratitude, but it is a way of which many organizations are using this to really embody a practice which can help on a broader public health reality, as well as in our own compassionate um, uh, situation. So one of the things it says there, the first one, I mean, it, it can also spell a clang, which is connect, learn, be active, take notice and give. That's an easy acronym to remember. But let's look at it this way. So keep learning. So what does that look like? For me, within the Western culture, even though I want to learn something new, learn a different skill, I actually look at that one and say, keep on learning. Keep on learning my habits. Keep on learning the things that I think I'm, I know. Keep on learning. Be curious. Be, be surprised. But keep learning is great because at one level you are learning about that. Then connection is, is the one that everyone always really knows a lot about, and that's connecting. Now, COVID has thrown us into a different world of how do we connect. We are tonight connecting through this. But actually, what does it really, really mean to connect? And for me, one of the hardest things to connect in terms of how I've been educated is to connect into the heart. Because with all of these practices, nothing can really work unless we really use the heart mind or the heart so that's where we talked earlier about courage so living from your heart so the connection is about connecting to people or connecting to the different things but i feel that very strongly that mindfulness is a way that you really connect to yourself and that's the very first slide that i showed was about trying to get in touch with your true nature then of course taking notice that's the ability to slow down and actually, we, we use a phrase calling slow up rather than slow down. <laughs> and again, it's because of that energy of raising it into your heart and raising it into your higher mind. So in, in doing that, you can use a much greater level of awareness to be able to really pay attention to what's going on. And I saw in the chat earlier there, someone had sort of said, sometimes you don't have to do anything, but just turn up and be there. So that's our beingness, being a human being. Um, when I was in the ambulance service, I was very privileged to help a lot of sick people. And sometimes I just didn't know what to do or what to say. But just by holding a hand on, and being there, you would see the monitor change. You'd see people feel just that sense, again, of connection. And I, so I got to learn that actually it wasn't so much what I needed to know about the body parts. It was the ability to, to just to be very present. And that's very much the same thing in our suicide prevention work. And then the next one is to give. And that's, for me, is really important. We've talked earlier about self-compassion. We've talked earlier about compassion. 
you can't give from an empty cup. You know, like when we're on an airplane, they talk about put the mask on first before you save someone else. That's really important. And we talked earlier about selfish or are we going to be selfless? To be selfless and to really give properly, we need to make sure that we are well resourced. And then the final one is be active. And that activity is really, really important because in some of the cultures, we talk about building our temple, that's our body. So in that, we need to take responsibility for moving well, eating well, living well. And those three things form a really, really great foundation for supporting our structure. And it's really important to do that now. So, so often you might say to someone, so what do you do for your well-being? And they give you a whole list. Or even sometimes people are rushing so much, they don't even cook themselves a meal. They don't even eat. Eating is really, really important. In India, it's called pasatam, so that's like the blessing. It's the receiving of your physical body is really, really important. So those are the five ways to well-being. We've used it a lot, and we, we try to use it as a way to, you know, show how many people we might have re connected to, what have we learned, what have we noticed with people. And so it's a really positive way to ground out being compassionate in, in, the, in this moment. So... One of the things we're also trying to do, and as a colleague of mine, Andy Brandley, who's on here, who helped set up something called Compassion Circles. That's just your one minute warning. One minute, great. And, and circles are really important because it takes us out of the hierarchical way that we have been looking at things. So we, we're looking at care circles and our definition of care there is compassion, acceptance, respect and empathy. And then Network of Wellbeing are just going to be starting listening spaces, same sort of format. So this Native American stroke ancient traditions of circles is really, really important. The circle of life, circles are so, so important. So we feel that if we can, if we can utilize these things, we can have a much, much better compassionate now situation because everyone, it says knowledge amongst many. So you're one amongst many. So there's no hierarchical um, list in, in the circles. So I'm just going to say two, two more things from Buddha. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind in the present and in the moment. Really, really hard to do, but in practice. And then these final six stains, which are really hard to practice, but I really, if we can do this, it'd be wonderful. Don't recall. Let go of what has passed. Don't imagine. Let go of what may come. Don't think. Let go of what's happening now. Don't examine. Don't try to figure anything out. Don't control, don't try to make anything happen, and relax. That's the most important thing. None of us can heal if we don't relax. So relaxation is the key. Thank you. I'll hand back to Flo now. Thanks so much, Jukes. And you just need to um, stop, select stop sharing your screen. Um, it's gone, it's gone. It should hopefully be an option at the top. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Ah, oh, and thank you um, for the reminder to relax at the end of your talk. Yeah, and, and thank you everyone already spontaneously giving you a round of applause. That was a really beautiful um, sharing and I really um, appreciate it as does everyone here. And actually, just as a side note, I didn't realise that you'd been to Bhutan before. Um, I, I've also been to Bhutan and learned about the Grace National Happiness, so we'll have to have a chat about that another time. Maybe a topic for a future webinar. <laughs> Um, and thank you also for mentioning the uh, listening spaces. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on them again um, at, the, um, at the end. But actually, um, I know we're running those, I'll just mention briefly now, we're running those in partnership with an organisation called The Heart Movement, um, which is also very resonant with your talk, Tukes, because you were talking so much about the importance of tuning in with the heart space um, and I know that Jasmine from the Heart Movement is joining this webinar this evening so Jazz feel free if you'd like to um, share in the chat box a link to our next listening space and um, just for people's reference um, and we'll also include that in the follow-up email for those that would like to join us and learn more. Um, but thanks Jazz. Um, so now um, it's been so wonderful already to hear from these three amazing speakers and um, we're always so aware of the wisdom in the online room so to say. Um, so what we'd like to do now is um, split you guys into breakout rooms to just discuss and share a bit with each other on a few, we've got a few suggested 
questions to help guide your discussions. Um, and then we're going to come back. We'll be in the breakout rooms for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back all together for a Q&A. Um, I know that a few, uh, quite a few of you have asked questions already. And if you've got questions that kind of come to you in the breakout rooms, those will also be very welcome. So I'm just going to pop in the chat box now um, the topics that you're going to be invited to speak about in the breakout rooms um, and then maybe if you want to just make a quick note or take a screenshot um, or even make a mental note for yourself um, so it will be introducing yourself um, your name and where you're from um, sharing what practices have been supportive of your mental health and well-being in this time so Tukes has given a wonderful range of examples there with the five ways to well-being of different types of practices we've also focused a lot on mindfulness and compassion um, through Karen and Paramabandhu's talk so yeah just exploring what, what does that mean to you um, it might not be that you frame what you do for your health and well, mental health and well-being as, as a practice as such but just see what what response makes sense for you in that question and sharing in your group and then does your practice or your kind of what you do for your uh, mental health and well-being change if you if and when you connect with others so for example if you meditate with others if you get active with others if you connect with others um in in a deep and compassionate way um, so yeah those are some questions to guide your discussions um, you'll be in groups of around um three to five people um, and yeah you'll be there for about 10 minutes i'll give you a um a, a notice when you've got a few minutes to go um, and just to um, just to note that the speakers will join randomly in with the rooms, as will some of the now team, but you, that will be kind of randomly allocated. So do kind of take care in your group, make sure to hear everyone's voices um, and, and just connect in with each other and take this opportunity and look forward to seeing you back here in 10 minutes. So you'll see an option now to go to your breakout room. started again so we'll restart the recording welcome back to those joining on the recording um, so now what we're going to do is move towards um, the question and answer part of our evening together um, but I know that so much um, wisdom has been shared in the chat box this evening as well as in conversations with each other um, and so I would love to invite my colleague Tracy from the Network of Wellbeing to um, just give a, a very short summary of some of the insights and discussions that have been happening in the chat, just to kind of include and raise up those voices. So I'll hand over to you briefly, Tracy. Thanks, Flo. And uh, yeah, thanks to all of you for participating so fully and so openly in the chat and for sharing your experiences with us tonight. Um, kind of three main threads, I think, kind of came out quite strongly for me uh, in the discussion. The first was this, um, this strong sense that mindfulness without compassion really is kind of incomplete. Uh, the two things being really integrated and um, as Karen uh, expressed these kind of two wings of the bird an image that um, really seemed to resonate with so many of you. Um, Andy was mentioning actually this is a really big challenge with secular mindfulness in the West and, and we often I think um, leave compassion behind. Um, Andy spoke also uh, about a Christian Neff talk um, that referenced the same two wings and this shift from fight and flight to attend and befriend where mindfulness is the attend and compassion is the befriend, which I, I really love. So thanks for sharing that, Andy. Um, kindness, as Angela articulated, and I know that many of our keynote speakers have touched upon tonight as well, really is a practice. Um, and a practice that can be put uh, into practice in our lives in so many different ways. And I'm sure many of you have spoken about that in the breakout groups. Um, and Lisa shared a resource app, which I haven't heard of. So thanks, uh, Lisa. It's called Rewi, if um, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, um, which encourages us to reflect on kindness, gratitude and meditation. Um, yeah, lots of expressions of gratitude to Karen for sharing her personal journey, uh, the five finger exercise from Paramabandhu and, and lots of great wisdoms and reminders uh, from Chuk. So, yeah, thank you all for sharing, sharing those thoughts with us. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tracy, for that insight. And thank you, everyone, for sharing um, your reflections and wisdom in the chat box. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to um, Roger, who has been 
um, looking, keeping an eye on your questions in the chat box. But feel free, now that we've come to um, the Q&A part of the evening, if you've got a question that's kind of arisen since the speakers have shared um, their talks that you'd like to ask um, one of the three of them or all of the three of them, then feel free to share that in the chat box now. Um, and I'll hand over to Roger to ask the questions that have been shared so far. Okay, the number of thumbs flow, uh, which is great. I, I guess start maybe with Caro from, from London, who asked about um, what's, what's the progress on getting mindfulness and compassion into school curricula uh, and, and in, in, so that kids can learn this stuff and maybe start their lives off in a, in a way that many of us weren't able to. Thanks, Roger. Um, would anyone like to come in on that first? Um, Karen, um, perhaps we'll go around in the same order that you spoke and if you've got something to share on that particular question, you're welcome to. So Karen? Yeah, great question and something that um, we feel very strongly about. And we do actually have a programme that goes into schools called Minding Your Health in Education. Uh, so we've, we've been into primary, secondary and special educational needs uh, schools. And so, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely applaud that question and um, feel, feel so strongly about it. Um, and wouldn't it be wonderful if it were integrated into schools um, or across the world? You know, that it, we all need it, don't we? And um, you know, there are some very, very good organisations that are trying to make that happen. There's a lot of research around it. Uh, but yeah, it's still not the norm, <laughs> um, which it really should be. So yeah, let's yeah. keep going and hope, it, I hope that happens. Mm. Definitely. Thank you, Karen. And just to say, we will include links to all of the speakers' organisations so you can find out more about the um, what Karen's mentioned there. And Paramabandi, would you like to add anything there? No, or, or Jukes, anything to add? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next. In the last, in the last um, I think it might be in the parliament before last, there's another organisation called Mindfulness in Schools Project. And so that we went to the House of Commons and the Department of Education, and it, it was looking really positive and it's sort of come off the agenda now. So again, for now, because of where we've been, I think it will be a really important thing to, to see whether we can lobby our MPs about to see whether we can get it back in there. Because again, in other cultures, they just do it automatically from a very young age. And it's really, really important to embed that because that will just bring more kindness and love into our schools. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Cheeks. Uh, back to you, Roger, for the next question. Okay, next one, Eliani. And I know it was Eliani because she was in my group. Um, so I got the, the pronunciation right, hopefully. Um, how do you take people with you when they can't be bothered or don't want to practice um, or specifically when they're feeling low what can we do to encourage people to do that to practice and that's mm -hmm. what take them with us? great question maybe we'll go to paramabandu first on this one okay yeah. yeah no it's a very good question um i mean there is a thing about you know you can only take horses to um uh you know the water you can't make them drink um so i think if we're talking about somebody else like a you know a loved one who is low i think we do have to manage our expectations because uh, of course you know the more that we push them the more we're likely to get a, a, a sort of um a, a push back uh, as it were so I, th I think we need to hold our um desire for someone to practice in a quite a large space so that you know we hold it in a sort of inviting space um, i think if it's ourselves who are you know are struggling with low mood or sort of don't want to meditate or we find it difficult to set up a, a practice i've got three suggestions which is one is just to be really interested why we don't want to do it because there's such a lot of learning that we can get there from why we don't want to uh, meditate or practice uh, secondly do it for a shorter period you know, even just, um, you know, a couple of minutes can make a difference. Just like putting in that little pause, we talk about, you know, putting in a breathing space, just putting in a little pause can be a really, really good thing. And then thirdly, do it with other people. So, um, you know, there's lots of online stuff um, uh, going on. Um, you know, we'll, we'll share at the end in an email the stuff that we do from my centre, London Buddhist uh, Centre Online. There are lots of places doing online uh, teaching and just 
just join. I mean, it's sort of, you know, even if you don't participate, I think you actually get something from just being there. So mm -hmm. three suggestions. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Paramavandi. That's really helpful. And Karen and or Chooks, anything to add there or before we move on to the next question? I, I agree with all of those and I think also modelling it. So yeah. if, you're, if you're doing, doing practices in mindfulness and compassion, uh, people want to know what you're doing and they're naturally curious and inquisitive. And so I think that's the best way to sell it is to model it yourself. Perfect. Mm. Thank you, Karen. Chooks, any, any final thoughts? Yeah, it's just a ripple effect again. You know, it's like I've given up trying to force people to do it because I just get myself upset. So, uh, yeah, just the ripple effect and, you know, especially be friendly. Just be friendly. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Um, Roger, what's the next question coming in? Wondering also, Flo, how much time we've got for more questions. What about so another um, five minutes or, or so um, for questions? So maybe another um, three three questions to fit in. So uh, maybe maybe if it's okay, then I'll I'll do three questions in one go if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. Because um, we've got we've got three exactly. on the list. With the speakers. And so just okay mentioning if they're um, related, because I saw one person in the chat had a question for a specific person. So if they are for a specific person. Um, then do say, and otherwise we'll just hand them around to all the speakers to answer, if that's okay. Okay, one of them is for a specific person. Angela wanted to know about the relation, more about the relationship between listening and con kindness and compassion. How important is listening as part of this process? Rebecca, a very practical question about, um, if you're a single carer for a one-year-old or maybe even more children, uh, is there a recommended practice uh, that, that any of the speakers might recommend in, in that context? Uh, when obviously you're very busy and in high demand. Um, Ruth wants to know more from Chukes in particular about how, how he's bringing compassion into his suicide prevention work. Um, so maybe we could have some answers to those and, and then if there's anything extra in the, in the chat box, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it now. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, Roger. Should we hand, is that okay if we go to you first on those, Chukes? Um, so um, the questions around listening, um, around kind of practices for single parents and around kind of um, reflections for you specifically about how you bring compassion into your um, suicide prevention work? So um, on listening, listen and silent are very similar letters and in that silence you can really hear even if people aren't speaking. So for me that's what I try and do especially if I'm in a situation around suicide prevention the big thing that we do in our training courses is to try to really listen and why we why I chose suicide prevention compared with many of the other modalities of how we all try to heal is it really gives me the space to say I really don't know I really don't know why you want to take your life but I'm going to do in my heart I'm going to do everything I can to help to be here with you to connect with you to make you know that life is precious. But at the same time, under, um, the lovely phrase by Stephen Covey, which says, seek first to understand, then be understood. And if you practice that, it for me, it really, really helps because that compassion is about understanding. And we may not fully understand, but we can do, a, have a really good shot at it. And with children, whew, <laughs> You know, everyone struggles with that one. But I mean, all I know is that when I had a daughter um, and she was very young, everything had to go really slow. So that's a mindfulness practice in itself. Every flower was checked, every single dog poo was checked, you name it. And that was a mindful practice in itself. So that's mine. Thanks, Jukes. Yeah, the, the realities of parenthood in the early days. Um, would you, should we go to Karen next? on those questions um particularly the listening and the and the parenting um, yeah i think compassionate listening is so so important and really lacking in our society uh we do an exercise where somebody's talking for two or three minutes and the and the other person just has to sit and listen and it's actually really quite difficult for some people um so offering our, our listening ear is a real act of compassion and quite a rare one so uh, very very important and yeah for for anybody who's struggling with time and children it's uh, being kind to yourself not thinking you've got to do an hour's practice a day and being creative so 
do you have the opportunity of nipping to the loo and um, doing a, a very short practice there for 10 seconds or even um, doing a mindful movement practice with your little one so uh, yeah being really creative is so important too thank you karen and um, and paramavandi yeah okay so yeah i say yes to, uh, i agree with that what uh, chukes and karen have said already um but maybe just to add um so i think in terms of listening i think i also want to include listening to oneself so i think that's really important that we have a an attitude of of listening to ourselves of listening to what is going on in ourselves um, that that itself is an act of kindness but yeah clearly um, also listening to other people and I think um, just being really interested when we notice that desire to fix it can be very it creeps up very sometimes it's very strong but sometimes it can be quite subtle how we want to you know fix we can sort of feel that urge coming up of now I want to put in my tuppence um or you know whatever it is now you know i've got a brilliant idea and i want to put that forward and it's just like can we just sit back from that and just just come back to ourselves come back to being with the person without trying to fix or change something even when it's difficult so yeah i think there's a it's, it's an important practice that to do with listening and, and, and compassion and then um in terms of parenthood I, I do very much agree with Karen about being creative. I, you know, um, um, some of my mother friends like to uh, chant mantras with their children, um, which is quite a nice, a nice, a nice practice to um, do. Um, but I think just the thing of uh, whatever we're doing, we can try and be mindful of. Um, our bodies and minds particularly our bodies you know if you're holding a child we can you know you can be mindful of that it, it takes practice but there's there's sort of scope for and also sometimes you know there are there are these little gaps when we're waiting for something to happen it, it's not just with with children but sort of generally in our in our lives like you know waiting at the bus stop or something like that there are all oppo little opportunities um, to practice so yeah it's being creative and just seeing what little gaps can open up um when we can bring a bit more attention in thank you so much <clears throat> paramavandu and all of our speakers for sharing your responses to those questions actually this um all these topics are so close to my heart so i've really enjoyed listening to what's been shared this evening and just to um we're going to kind of now draw uh, to a close in the last five or ten minutes together um, with a kind of final thought from each of the speakers and just um, briefly sharing um, other ways you can kind of stay connected, get involved with events from the Network of Wellbeing. Um, and we'll, of course, send um, follow up links from all the speakers for ways that you can get involved with them. But just on those kind of two um, topics that were raised there, on the um, listening um, point, I'm just going to share in the chat box again just now that um, like was mentioned earlier, the Network of Wellbeing and the Heart Movement are running listening spaces in partnership every other Tuesday evening to, to kind of complement our webinar series. Um, and next Tuesday evening, we're going to be running um, a listening space on lessons from lockdown, self-care and wellbeing. Um, and that will really be a chance to practice listening together in the way that Tukes so wonderfully talked about in his um, presentation earlier. So you're all very welcome to join us there. Um, we'd love to see some of you. And just again, very briefly on parenting, I'm also um, a parent of a one and a half year old and I've really been trying to embed my mindfulness practices. So Rebecca, I'd be happy to share and chat with you. I've, I've been practicing online with a small group of mums and I, yeah, I'd be really happy to connect and share resources and ideas. Um, so we will hand over um, to the speakers for their final thoughts. So after reflecting on this um, evening together that we've had and what they've shared, do you have a kind of final reflection and or call to action that you would like to share with people uh, leaving this evening? So I'll hand, um, and we've just got a final five minutes, so about a minute or so, a minute and a half each. Um, and I'll hand, we'll go round in the same order that we did for the speakers. So Karen, first. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's been a really wonderful evening. Uh, yeah, mindfulness and compassion can change your life and um, give it a try. You'll be amazed at the transformative effects and qualities of, of doing those two practices um, in, a, in a really integrated way. So if you would like to learn more about it, then, you know, do come and have a look at mindfulnessuk.com, our website, and uh, yeah, we'll try and support you as best we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, and Paramavandi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very good evening. Um, uh, yeah, so if you're not familiar with the practices, as Karen says, do learn them. There's lots of places that teach them. And if you're already familiar, it's really helpful to have to be practicing with other people and also to get a fresh input. So again, I'd really look for um uh you know get, getting teaching and as there's lots of people lots of places do it we'll send out the stuff that we do uh, which is london buddhist center online we've got a couple of courses coming up to do with um uh, mental health so um life coming out of lockdown um we've got a little, little course on that how to survive that and also one to do with um detoxing the mind sort of working with uh, recovery and addiction Wonderful, thank you, Paramabandi. And uh, Chooks, over to you. Yeah, just <clears throat> the whole, uh, thank you very much, everyone, but kindness is the real one for me. And again, the practice, even if we don't have a proper practice, we can all breathe deep. So breathing deep just really does it as well. Um, you can do it at traffic light, you can do it on the toilet, like someone said. You can do it anywhere. So deep breathing really, really helps. And, and for me, not being seduced by my emotions, even though emotions are good, to get into that heart is really, really important. So that's my... Wonderful. Thank you so much. And just to um, close the evening together, I would really love to take a, a screenshot of us um, so that we can share and remember this evening and share on social media. Um, so if that's okay, if you don't want to be included, feel free to turn off your camera. Um, but if you would be happy to be included, feel free to wave or make a mindful gesture or whatever, or just smile whatever feels um, most appropriate to you in this moment. And I'll just take a kind of picture of you all. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful um okay so we're even finishing a few minutes early this evening did you, sorry, did, oh, you yeah, you. did you mention the next one what it's going to be on the network of well-being thank yeah. you so much see you know you're <laughs> this is such a supportive community feeling um no i didn't um so we're um like cheeks has helpfully reminded we're running these webinars every two weeks and next time we're going to be um looking at creativity for health and well-being and we're actually for those that have been joining our webinars a bit more regularly we're going to be doing a slightly different format where we get you creating during the webinar in the breakout rooms um and and kind of interacting with each other creatively um and then um, it would be lovely if you want to join that one then we're going to have a bit of a pause um, over August for the summer break so we'd love to see as many of you as possible at the next webinar that will be on the 21st of July we'll send up the send the sign up link in the follow-up email and also like I've mentioned everyone's welcome at the listening space um, next week as well thank you so much Tukes for the reminder um, yeah so um, I, unless I'll, I'll just uh, leave the space open in case any other members of the speakers or now team want to share any final announcements and otherwise we will say goodbye for the evening. Oh, I see potentially Tracy unmuting. <laughs> no, okay, great. Okay, thank you guys all. It was a really wonderful really evening. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a thank nice you. evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.